So far, we have learned how to verify that a vector is in fact an eigenvector of a matrix A, but we have not yet looked at how to calculate eigenvectors. Uh, not in this particular video, but in the future video, we will actually learn how to calculate all these things. Right now, what we're focusing on is yeah, given eigenvectors, how do you compute eigenvalues? Given eigenvalues, how do you compute eigenvectors? And then we'll figure out, well, how do you, how do, where, where do you get the eigenvectors to begin with or the eigenvalues to begin with? So let's look at now the matrix A equals 2, 4, 4, 2. And these are in fact the eigenvalues of this matrix. Now remember, we said that uh, this is a 2 by 2. Therefore, there will be n equals 2 eigenvectors and two eigenvalues. And to find them, remember, we have to go back to the eigen equation, which says a times v equals lambda times v. So this is a matter of plugging in what we know and solving for what we don't. So if we think about this equation, now I'm not yet going to plug in my, my lambda, but what I want to do is I want to solve for v. And in order to solve for v, it just makes sense to do it symbolically so that we don't have to keep moving things around for each of the two different eigenvalues. But if I want to solve for v, the first thing I'm going to do is subtract lambda v from both sides. And that's going to result in having the zero vector on the right. This may start to look familiar from the example where we found the steady state for uh, the rural and urban populations in the long haul. Uh, here we had a coefficient of one, in fact, and what we did next was we factored out the V, but we have to be careful here because Lambda is a scalar. So if I write this as a V minus Lambda I V, now a is a two by two, I is a two by two, and I can factor out uh, right factor a V. So I'll have a minus Lambda times I multiplied by V equals zero. So this right here is a matrix that once we, once we know what our A matrix is, we can plug that in, take away lambda times the identity, and that's going to be our coefficient matrix. And remember, V contains the two components of that vector that represent the eigenvector. So uh, let's go ahead and compute our A minus lambda I. So for lambda one equals six, if I plug that in here, I have a minus 6i is what I need to calculate. Okay, so a is the matrix 2, 4, 4, 2. 6i is, well, i is the 1, 0, 0, 1 matrix. So if I multiply it by 6, it'll be 6, 0, 0, 6. And if I take the difference there, I will have negative 4, 4, 4, and negative 4. So once again, one thing to notice here is these columns are linearly dependent. So this system will have infinitely many solutions. Another way of thinking about this is the determinant of this matrix, negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, minus 16 is equal to 0. Therefore, this matrix will have infinitely, uh, this, this system that we're about to solve will have infinitely many solutions. So, uh, now what I need to do is I need to count solve for V. So I'm going to go back up here and say, well, A minus 6I is the matrix negative 4, 4, 4, and negative 4 times the V vector. Now the V vector just contains some components. So I can call this V, uh, maybe I should call this V little 1 and V little 2. Notice I'm not putting the vector hat over it. These are just the components of, of, uh, of the V vector. And better yet, maybe we shouldn't use V. We'll just say stick to X and Y in there. So those are some components that will result in me getting the zero vector. So to do that, I'm, I'm now going to create my augmented matrix, negative four, 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 negative four, and then augmented by zero, zero, and I'm gonna perform reduced row echelon form. So recall that these are the coefficients of X and Y, and here are my constants. So when I do the row reduction on this, using my calculator or other piece of technology, I should end up with one, negative one, zero, 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 zero. So I have to now interpret what that means. And what I can infer from this is that the first equation says that X minus Y has to equal zero. 
and the second equation says that 0 equals 0. So to work with this now, uh, to see that there are infinitely many solutions, we see that the, this equation in order to determine x depends on the value of y. And since there's no equation that tells us what number y has to be, we can say y is a free variable. And since y is a free variable, that means we're going to assign y to be the value c. And we're going to evolve, uh, so that means if x minus y has to equal 0 and y is equal to the value of c, then x has to equal c as well. So another way of thinking about this is the difference between two numbers has to be 0, so they have to be equal to each other. So these two components have to be identical. So what we've now confirmed is that the eigenvector v1 is any vector of the form cc, uh, which if you think about what this actually implies, this means that any multiple of the 1, 1 vector will work. So negative 2, negative 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, negative pi, negative pi. You, you have infinitely many choices for this. Um, typically, uh, and this goes with the lambda 1 equal to 6. So uh, I'm going I'm to go ahead and erase this for now. I just wanted you to be able to see that, that any, any multiple of the 1, 1 vector will work. So you get to actually pick one. Uh, the choice of C is arbitrary. You get to choose what that value is. But note that C should not equal 0. Because if c equals 0, then everything falls apart and you're left with the 0 vector. And we don't want that because the 0 vector is a point. It's not actually a vector with a, with, that has any sort of magnitude whatsoever. Uh, so I like to start off, I like to just assign c equal to 1. Therefore, my particular, my v1, would equal 1, 1. But what we should be able to notably verify is that in fact, any vector of the form cc, if I take 2, 4, 4, uh, what was our matrix from earlier? It was 2, 4, 4, 2, 2, 4, 4, 2. That, that matrix is going to have this as its eigenvector. And the way we can verify that is if we put any vector where the top and bottom component is the same, the output that we're going to get is uh, let's see, 2c plus 4c is 6c. I think we get 6c here and we get 6c down here as well. And so we can see that if we factor out that 6, what we put in, what we put in for an eigenvector is the same thing as what we get out except scaled by a factor of 6. So it doesn't matter what you choose as the particular values within that, provided that it follows the structure that this eigenvector has to have x and y components that are exactly the same. Now we need to go through the same process for the eigenvalue number 2, which was lambda equals negative 1. I'm sorry, negative 2. So we're going to do that for negative 2. When lambda 2 equals negative 2, we now uh, again have to compute the a minus lambda because we said that a minus lambda i and now I can say lambda 2 times i multiplied by the uh, second eigenvector has to produce the 0 vector. So I'm going to compute a minus lambda i, a minus lambda i. So my a matrix is 2, 4, 4, 2. Remember, what I'm after here is I want to compute the eigenvector that goes with the eigenvalue of negative 2. I'm going to, com I'm going to subtract away. So lambda is negative 2. So that means we're going to be adding 2i. So plus 2i will be 2, 0, 0, 2. The identity matrix has the components 1, 0, 0, 1. So if you double them, you get 2, 0, 0, 2. And when we add those together, we get 4, 4, 4, 4. Once again, notice that these columns are linearly dependent. The determinant is 0. So we're going to have infinitely many solutions. And we're going to find out um, eventually that the way we compute eigenvalues forces the columns of the a minus lambda i matrix to be linearly dependent and therefore we'll have infinitely many solutions. So a minus lambda i we have as 4, 4, 4, 4. 
And now what we need to do is we need to compute the components of V2. And to do that, once again, we'll see that this is just some X and some Y equals zero, zero. And so we form our Gaussian matrix, four, 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 zero, zero. And now we are going to reduce this, reduce row echelon form on this guy. And it's gonna produce one, one, zero, 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 zero. So if you take negative one times the first row, add it to the second row, it's gonna cancel out. And then if you scale the first row by one to get the one here, it's gonna end up being one, one, zero. So when we interpret this, we can say that this means X plus Y has to equal zero and that zero has to equal zero. And so once again, we see that there's no value that has to be specified for Y. It just has to be the case that X and Y add zero. And so we know again, Y is free. And this equation right here, remember this tells me that X has to equal the negative of Y. So if y is going to be equal to c, my final eigenvector is going to be the, have the form um, c. And then if y is equal to c, then x is equal to the negative of that. And so any multiple of negative 1, 1 will work. Once again, we could verify that if you take the 4, 4, 4, 4 matrix and multiply it by negative c, c, what you're going to get out is a multiple of that matrix. In fact, let's let's try to squeeze it in here. We'll say 4, 4, 4, 4 times negative C, C. And what you're going to get as an output is uh, negative C plus 4, C, um, negative 4, C plus 4, C, excuse me. And actually what I failed to do here is I'm not, uh, I'm taking the wrong matrix here. Uh, so I should have done uh, A times V. So A was 2, 4, for two, so this is kind of just our check. We found the right eigenvector. Uh, times what we're claiming now is anything of the form where the X and the Y components are negatives of each other should equal, well, let's see, that will give me negative two C plus four C is two C, and negative four C plus two C is negative two C. And so we see that what comes out when I uh, insert a vector of that form is two times, or sorry, negative two times negative C and positive C. So I see that that is in fact an eigenvector. Once again, I input negative C, C, I got out a scalar multiple of that vector. So any choice of C is fine, again, other than zero. So uh, let C equal one be my choice. And therefore V2 is gonna be the vector negative one, one with the corresponding eigen, uh, or, or we could actually even say, I'm gonna choose negative one for C. Uh, no, why not? It's just for fun. Any, any vector of the form just to demonstrate this. So negative one, one, these are in fact negatives of each other, and that's fine. It doesn't mean that this top component has to be the negative one. It just means they have to be negatives of each other. So for lambda two equals uh, negative two, this is the eigenvector. So that's pretty much it for computing them. It requires a little bit more work than getting the eigenvalues. Next time we'll talk about how you actually get the eigenvalues in the first place, and um, then we'll put it all together. So we, we kind of mentioned that the geometric meaning of the eigenvalues and eigenvectors is that first of all, we started with this eigen equation AV equals lambda V, and from that algebraic structure, we can infer that any eigenvector of matrix A, that when transformed by it via multiplication, so A, if you take A times an eigenvector, results in the new vector, which is going to be lambda V, being a stretch or compression of V. So if you input V into this uh, transformation, what you get out is a scalar multiple of that vector. So if we uh, plugged in, so geometrically, the one negative one vector, that was actually what we called V2. But we don't really need to concern ourselves too much with that. Um, it, the subscript is, is pretty arbitrary. It doesn't really matter what which eigenvalue you call lambda one, which you call lambda two, as long as they go with the correct eigenvector. So here's my input uh, my input vector. That's the one negative one vector. And when I multiply it by a, I get the vector negative two, two. And so you can see it's a, it's not really a stretch or a compression. It's a, it's a stretch, but in the opposite direction. For lambda two equals six, that means if I put in one, one, what's gonna come out is the vector six, six. Again, no rotation, just a stretch of that vector. Now, if I insert some other arbitrary vector like 2, 1, and I multiply a times 2, 1, the 
I actually get the vector 810, which you can see.